Welcome to Overboard Entertainment, guys. So uh, this is actually the second time I've come out to film this portion of the test because on my first top speed test, I'll put up a video right now. I actually had a completely flat back right tire. I was wondering why my board kept pulling to the right and I was having to overcompensate. And I get to the top of the hill, turn around, I do the same thing and I get back here to the stop sign and I realize like, holy crap, my tire was completely flat that whole time. So. I tracked down a tube, got her switched out, and we're out here to get her done. And uh, as most of you know, Meepo sent out a new ESC to all the first generation uh, Meepo Hurricane owners. And uh, this is just gonna be a little bit of a how-to on anyone that's uncomfortable with putting that in the board by themselves and want a little bit of a walkthrough. So this is gonna be a really nice close look at the old ESC versus the new ESC and the improvements that were made on only the two most important things that I think, and that's off the line power and the top speed. So let's so just get right in. First generation Meepo, you already know that they sent out a charging cable and an on-off switch a new M4S remote and a charging cable, the new ESC itself, and these are just more or less to keep your motor cables pressed up against your deck. Probably something I'm not gonna put on because they're already pretty nice, so. All right, so these are the tools you're gonna need to get this job done. This is a T10 and a T15 star bit. That's just what I have that works perfectly to get the job done. This is a 932nd deep socket, which is gonna help you get them nuts out of the inside of the ESC to get things loosened up. Uh, these uh, needle nose help you get pretty much all the connectors off for you. And then these are gonna cut that protective casing on the motor wires. And a power drill will definitely help get all 16 of them bolts out of the top of your enclosure. And also, if you don't have anything to replace the casing on your motor wires, just use some black tape. It'll definitely help. All right, so first things first, you're gonna need to remove all 16 of these bolts around the top of the enclosure with the Allen that Meepo sent you. But as I said, it's gonna help you out a lot to use your power tool and just make quick work of it. I've already pre-taken mine out, and I have them stored in uh, one of these bags here that Meepo sent out with these parts just so I don't lose anything. Let's just get right into this thing. Okay guys, so when you get her opened up, this is exactly what you're gonna see. You have an XT60 connector here and an XT30 connector here. And this is where I think that your needle nose pliers are gonna come in because if you're fat fingered kind of like I am, you're, uh, you're gonna wanna use something like this. So I've already messed with this board, already kind of pulled it apart, but go ahead and get that pulled out. Come over here, do the same thing to this 30, get it pulled out. All right, now let's just try to get these out of the way the best that we can. Okay, now this is where the socket comes in and you're talking the 932nd. These nuts were done like extremely tight and honestly, I would just screw them out from here. I've already got a couple of them out if you can't see, but get to a point where you can just pop them out and uh, just continue that process with all six of them. Now once you got it flipped over, being careful not to pinch any of your wires, just go ahead and break all these free with the same size that you were using before. And repeat that with all six. Now that you got those out, you're gonna be able to remove these <clears throat> and you're gonna wanna set them off to the side. And you're gonna see that your ESC has fallen a little bit, but once you get your board flipped over, get your T15 and remove these two here. All right guys, so once you get these out, this is where your box cutter, your X-Acto knife is gonna come in. Let's just start with the hardest part and get rid of these protective casings on your motor wires here and here. I already got this one started a little bit. I'm just gonna finish her out. Just make sure you don't get too aggressive with it. You should be able to peel it off pretty well. Well, all right guys, just repeat this with all six. Be careful not to cut yourself and uh, you're one step closer to getting this bad boy out. Once you get those casings off, just go ahead and remove your motor wires. Just be careful, don't pull too hard. They are kind of on there, but just be firm with it. Repeat that to all six. So once you got your motor wires out of the way, there's only really three things you need to be focusing on, and that's these three white connectors right here. This is where your needle nose are gonna come in. Let me try to make sure you guys can see this here. Get a hold of this outside piece and just kind of start finagling it back and forth. And she comes out pretty simple. Do the same thing with this one. Just be careful. Get on the outside piece, finagle it loose. Let's do this last one. And get a hold of it here and pull it loose. Now, your ESC is free. All right, so once you got all that disconnected and your ESC is free, you wanna grab your battery Pull it up, grab your ESC, and more or less just slide it out. Just be careful of your wires when you lay your battery back down. Here you go. 
All right, some similarities and differences and things I'm not going to do would be, I'm not gonna replace this because the size of the wires and the connectors are exactly the same on the on off switch and the uh, charging cable, the XT30 connectors are the same, the wire size are the same, so I won't be replacing that. But some big differences would be the size of these motor wires and actually the placement of everything you can actually see where the motor wires are coming out of the right side of the ESC. They're actually, it's pretty much everything is coming out of here. And uh, another small difference is there's three drill holes. And in this new one, there's six. There's four here, but there's only two here. Not too big of differences besides that. That's what I want to see. Hey guys, so if you don't get a helping hand, make sure all your wires are out of the way. Get your ESC up in there and really give it a good shove gonna drop down in there just like that and at this point it's just doing everything in reverse let's go ahead and get our battery put back in the way it's supposed to okay guys so first things first make sure you get your motor wires properly separated but uh what you want to do you want to put your black motor wire into your blue ESC wire then you want to put your blue motor wire into your yellow ESC wire. And then you want to get your red motor wire and put it into your green ESC wire. And then obviously you would repeat on the other side. And the last thing you're going to want to do is connect this connector to the right direction. Excuse me. Once you get that all hooked up, you want to get your XT60 connector. She's kind of a tight squeeze, but I know she'll get in there. Well, she's alive. And you get your XT30 connector. And this is for your charger. You get it in there. And you should have a live board, people. And that is changing your ESC. All right, so how are we gonna do this to get the remote paired? Is you wanna turn the board on, turn the remote on, And see, mine's already connected because I just went through this. But what you'll do right after that is hold the start button on the board for seven seconds. And you'll hear that beep. And now it's flashing. What you're going to do then is you're going to hold this simultaneously. And it'll shut off. But what it's going to do is it's going to tell you that it's paired. And once it's paired, it'll just be automatic. And from that point on, you'll be able to turn your board on by remote as long as you kick your board back and forth as you're supposed to. Motor wires re-wrapped, black tape will do fine. Get those last 16 bolts put in there and uh, you are done. If you guys have any questions for me, just uh, drop a comment below and I will try to answer it. Let's get to All the right, guys, to start after. things off, we're gonna do a top speed test and I got the board warmed up. Let me show you what we're working with here. We got a nice little straightaway and it goes to a little incline and we're just gonna turn around and do the same thing on the way back. Let's get it. We're gonna do full throttle. This is speed mode four, full throttle. We're coming into the incline now. I got the remote in my left hand, so the screen is in my palm, but I'll put the GPS up. All right, and get up here and get turned around. Didn't feel bad. I just know it's not 35. That's what I'm really hoping is with this next test, I can actually get 35 out of this board, but all right, let's send it down. That's all she's got. All right, look what we got here. Couple e-bikes, father and son. But that's all she's got guys. So uh, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put up the after and uh, you can see the difference. Let's go. All right, we got the replaced ESC. One thing I wanted to mention is that the odometer will read zero when you get the ESC changed, regardless of what you had on your board. And I will say that the acceleration does feel a lot more powerful, but uh, we're not gonna know that until we actually get to the test for that. So let's just get this off the line. Four speed mode, full throttle, three, two, one. Oh yeah. I 
feels good. I can't say that it's 35, but it's definitely. Got I don't know. It feels good to me. Excited to get it turned down this hill. There's a little car coming, but I'll get to the other side of the road. All right, let's just send this thing full throttle. Set. Ooh. Yeah, she's got pull now. That's what I'm talking about. All right, guys, full throttle. Should be maxing out about right now. That's what she's got. Let's lay into these brakes. And they feel about the same as they did. I'm in number two on the brake. It still felt like the low 30s to me, but only the GPS is gonna know right now. So uh, let's just get back to the truck. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the before and the after up right now. And uh, we're gonna get to see an exact comparison of how much power this thing actually gained. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just let this play in real time. And you can see that the after is a little bit more snappy off the start. And this one I got slowed down quite a bit. Now realize that that is only the first 30 feet as far as marked out in cones, but you're seeing about 40 feet. But uh, I'm just gonna let this go and you guys can see the difference. But keep in mind that 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 feet, that board, it just keeps pulling and the pull is more aggressive than it was with it before. Well, that's all I got for this one, guys. If you didn't find it entertaining, hopefully for the people that needed it, they found it informative. I will say the off the line power, I can just feel in the way that I have to brace myself and my hips that it does have a lot more power just as in the full range of the board, whether it's only doing 31, 32 still, it has a lot more power, I could just feel it. I don't, like I said, I don't have really anything to say about the top speed, still felt like low 30s, but uh, nonetheless, it was a nice upgrade, especially since Meepo sent it out for free, so you can't complain about that. I don't really have too much else to say, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.